think that brings us into like our final scenario. Just the interest of time, we'll make this 15 minutes. I would love it if we could do a breakout group. And what you're going to do is you're going to review one of the three scenarios on the following slides. It's really just applying, you know, really everything you've learned through the async learning, through this session, to whether it's the SBI feedback model, whether it's the high performance model. And it's really addressing the scenario as, as a manager. We'll do a 15 minute breakout group and we'll come back debrief. We'll close it out and uh, that'll be that. All right, sending you away. We got the crew back. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that. I'd be curious, like, you know, as we're closing this out, if any group, you know, would like to just debrief high level points from the scenario that they chose and what you all discuss in your breakout groups. Don't be shy, feel free to share. Our group time. thought it would be funny to pick the hardest scenario, which is a top performer that um, continues to do any work that's assigned to her or him. Um, but when we're sharing it with them, they are downplaying their achievements and they appear, they appear unmotivated to reach the next level in their role. Amelia had the idea to potentially leverage the SBI model, the Situation Behavior Impact Model, uh, an awesome help to flesh it out in our docs. I'm happy to read it. Or Chris or Glenn, do you want to speak up and share with uh, the group kind of what we thought our situation might have been? Yeah, I, I'll take the first bullet that we put in there. Okay. Uh, now in the current role right now, the specific time and place, they may not have the full awareness and awareness was the key word right now of their achievements. And perhaps the team member is wired to be humble, right? And so um, this achievement, you know, we don't, maybe it just isn't impactful for them. And yeah. finding that out um, was, uh, you know, understanding where they're at in this current situation. And the second one that I'll hand off behavior to somebody else. It was awesome. He's the one that brought this up. That was a good point. More work had been given to that individual, but we don't really know the context of it, whether or not it was um, expected, right? It was something that they were asking for. So now, hey, is the promotion, and the reason why you're not excited about it is because you're going to put more on my plate. And I didn't really ask for this in the first place. So really, we don't really understand um, from a situational standpoint, if this is something that, that, that they're motivated for, or if it's just another thing that's being added to them. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we, we, that we took away from that. I will hand off behavior to... I'll jump in since I think Glenn has a problem <laughs> with his leg. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on behavior, so given uh, the situation and uh, scenario given, it's just tie, trying to tie in um, what was the behavior that was observed, like how they appear unmotivated for further progression and giving examples of that and how it seems like they are not then, they may not be recognizing their achievements uh, and therefore it looks like it's being downplayed. So giving example to that to that effect on those two behaviors. Yeah, I think I think one thing, uh, Melanie, I think it was who brought it up was the imposter syndrome. You know, this might be yeah. a, a case of, you know, I don't know, Assam, if you were gonna say that, that but. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah. Stole my thunder there, Josh. Oh, my bad, my bad. But that is exactly where we at least led this to. Uh, other things that came up could be culturally how they were raised they could be raised to naturally be humble so not just not necessarily lack of awareness which could be very very much the case but if it's not the lack of awareness they just are not um, outspoken about their accomplishments and one potential impact could be getting lost in the noise of other more outspoken teammates especially in sales you know sometimes it's certain companies not get lab per se but certain companies the loudest person tends to get the most attention and the most accolades. So that could be a potential impact. Yeah, trying to stay humble, not showing off, uh, you know, pursuing excellence in current role. They may not feel that they are good enough for the next step, hence the imposter syndrome. Yeah, great point. I think um, 
it's funny that, you know, Tim, you mentioned this is the more difficult out of the scenario. So I wonder if this is a scenario that anyone has actually found themselves in, you know, at GitLab. I'd like to think my manager has found himself in that spot with me. No? All right. <laughs> well, no. I, I've, I've observed it in a previous life of, uh, and the feedback I've gotten is like, hey, not everybody is on that same trajectory. And sometimes it's okay to have you know, B players in the team that are doing their work, but uh, maybe they've got some other things going on in their, their life that kind of the work piece isn't a priority at that time. So, yeah, you know, that's, I hadn't thought about it like that before, but yeah, it's, it's reasonable, but I think it's important to then to make sure like you're having that holistic conversation of what is that person? What does success look like? What does happiness look like? So, you, you know, you can get to that root cause of it. Yeah. yeah. Spot on. It, this happens quite a bit in, in the channel world. Uh, I'm sure Amelia, you'll, you'll recognize this, right? It's a lot of folks in the channel world stay in the exact role for decades. Uh, CDW is an example. They'll start as a account manager and they're still in that exact same role because they love it. And there's something we said about wanting to just have that, um, whether it's work-life balance or more, more of like, I love what I do. And I genuinely, genuinely just want to stay in this role. Mm. Yeah, I was just going to say there's two comments. I've seen the same sort of thing. I was earlier on in my career, just always assumed that everyone wanted to move on and get promoted and become manager and get a bigger team. And like Asim said, there's just, it was kind of a, an, an insight to me of having that conversation with a couple of people saying, I don't want that. I'm, I'm really happy with what I do and, and I want to be the best at what I do. And like you said, in those roles for years. So I think just acknowledging what that personal motivation is, is important. Um, the other thing I'd say there as well is in APAC, it's quite a cultural norm in, um, in certain countries uh, that they don't, they don't want to receive that feedback. They certainly don't want to receive it publicly and they don't want to receive it in front of their manager because it kind of undermines maybe their manager's um, their sort of control of the situation. So I think there's a tendency in kind of a, you know, Western European, US, Australian sort of bias to be very outspoken about those sorts of things. And in, in, in many of the other countries in North Asia, you know, there's a, there's a saying around, you know, the, the nail that sticks out furthest from the wood is the first one that gets hit. So just kind of, that's don't don't make me front and center. I'm happy where I'm at. So I just think it's something we've got to be very careful to not, because that can be an embarrassing situation for some employees. Do you also feel like this might be a flight risk situation where the person is, you know, looking outside or something like that's happening? Could be. If you're paranoid. Yeah, <laughs> because one of the things is, you know, as a manager, I always want to like amplify these voices, but I've come across situations where people are actually looking outside and that's why they don't want to like, you know, want to be promoted or because they're, they're, their head is not there. So that's another situation, right? That we have to be really, really careful about. Yeah, good. it's not a great reference point, but I've had a couple of people that have joined GitLab that took several months to update their LinkedIn profile. And to me, it's an early indicator that they haven't quite decided <laughs> that they're here or not. So it was interesting. Uh, you know, whereas other other companies I've been at, that's the first thing they update. So it was it was just interesting to me. I think um, a couple of people that we've hired that have come from larger organizations, I think they were still had one foot in, one foot out. So that's an early sign. We had that discussion. I had that discussion with one of them just asking, you know, why after three months are they still not working here on, on LinkedIn? So. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> it, was, it was an oversight. They didn't, you know, it was one of those things. So we never quite got to the bottom of it, but um, I, I still here. They, just... they might've been in a country that had a probation period. And they're like, if I make it past six months, then I'm gonna update it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that, that'll happen too, actually, Tim. That's a good point. They've been here a year now, so maybe it's okay. So they've updated. <laughs> They're just keeping their options open. I knew, I knew somebody who um, 
they took a leave of absence, unpaid leave of absence from their employer to, and they went to another job. They were there for two months to try it out. And then they went back to their old employer. And I was like, I don't think that's legal, but okay, it happens. One foot in, one foot out. Cool. Well, I know we're about a minute to time and you know, I get like we keep meetings on time. So I want to be sensitive to everybody's schedule. I just wanted to say, I really appreciate David and I's collaboration on this to, to bring this to, to you and your involvement in it. You know, I know we threw a lot out you know, during this Q2 training, for the virtual sessions, as well as the async learning. So really appreciate you taking the time to invest in your career and your development. All I can say is Lab is really invested in people leaders, whether you're a manager, a senior manager, a VP or a director, this is like top priority for Sid. So we're gonna to continue to make these better and I would love your feedback. So I'm gonna put a evaluation into the chat, take a minute or two, give us your honest feedback. We're always trying to make this a better program and iterate as we move forward. David, anything else I left off before we close out? Yeah, I mean, well said, Josh. And we will look at that feedback to help inform uh, as we finalize and refine the agenda for what we focus on in Q3 for the Field Manager Summit. Again, whether that's in person, as well as the, the virtual offering for, for those that aren't able to, to join us. So thank you in advance. Please do make the time and then plus one to what Josh mentioned about. Thank you not only for your participation, but the really thoughtful engagement right, with the social learning issues. And then here on these calls, I've learned a lot from you all and hope you've learned from each other. And even if you have just a few takeaways, uh, think about things of what did you learn today? Or what did you learn in these three sessions this quarter that you can immediately start to put into action to help improve you know, the health and performance of, of your teams? I'd also just wanted to say in closing, like, thank you to Josh and the corporate L&D team. So Josh is very soon going on paternity leave, is expecting a little one. So, Baby daddy. Uh, so congrats, little, Josh. Little Excited for you. And, uh, and and Josh has just been an amazing partner with this. So thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to the continued collaboration. Thanks, David. It's been awesome working with you. I'm going off the grid for a couple months. So if you don't are see you me taking around, the full? Are you uh, hopefully you're taking the full three, aren't you? Or more? I'm going to do three. Yeah. And I'm going to try to make you. I'm going to try to make contribute, but I'm a, I'm a little scared to leave with all the stuff happening at GitLab. But is there ever a right time to take paternity leave? No. No, you just look <laughs> at your home life and say, this is the right time for he or she. Yeah. Right. right. Good for you. That's awesome. It. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Josh and David. Thank you really all. Good. Great sessions. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Talk to you later. Very engaging. Yep. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care.